How Toilet Paper Is Made Did you know that the average person uses about 100 rolls of toilet paper per year? Ever wondered how a tree transforms into the soft, comforting rolls we rely on every day? This everyday essential is something we often take for granted, but its journey from forest to bathroom is nothing short of remarkable. Before paper was widely available, the Romans used an L-shaped stick, like a hockey stick, made of wood or precious metal. At public toilets, people used sponges on sticks that were kept in salt water between uses. Until the early 20th century, corn cobs were also used. The introduction of toilet paper rolls completely changed the game. Let's dive into the process of how thousands of toilet paper rolls are produced in modern factories. Step 1. Sourcing the Raw Material The core of toilet paper production is the choice of pulp, the raw, fibrous material that determines the product's quality, softness, and strength. Manufacturers rely on two primary types of pulp, virgin fiber and recycled fiber. Virgin fiber pulp is crafted directly from freshly harvested trees, such as softwoods like pine spruce or hardwoods like eucalyptus and birch. These long, robust fibers create softer, more durable toilet paper, offering manufacturers precise control over the paper's texture and consistency. The result is a premium product that balances strength with comfort. On the other hand, recycled fiber pulp provides an eco-friendly alternative sourced from recovered paper products like office paper, newspapers, and cardboard. The recycling process involves collecting, sorting, and cleaning the waste paper to extract usable fibers. While recycled fibers are shorter and may yield a slightly less soft product, technological advancements have dramatically improved their quality, making recycled toilet paper a viable and sustainable option. The journey of toilet paper begins in carefully managed forests, where trees are selected for their unique properties. Softwoods like pine and spruce contribute long fibers that lend strength while hardwoods like eucalyptus add short fibers for softness. This blend ensures the final product is both durable and gentle, meeting the demands of everyday use. By balancing the use of virgin and recycled fibers, manufacturers can cater to diverse consumer preferences, offering everything from luxurious softness to eco-conscious options. This intricate process transforms raw materials into the humble yet essential products we rely on daily. Step 2. Debarking and Chipping Once the logs arrive at the mill, they undergo a process called debarking. The outer bark, which is not suitable for paper making, is removed using rotating drums or hydraulic debarkers. This bark isn't wasted, it's often repurposed as biomass fuel to power the mill, making the process more efficient and sustainable. After debarking, the logs are fed into massive chippers that cut them into small, uniform wood chips. These chips are sorted by size with larger pieces being re-chipped to ensure consistency. The uniformity of the chips is crucial as it allows for even processing in the next stage, pulping. Step 3. Pulping Pulping is the process of breaking down the wood chips into individual fibers, which will eventually form the basis of the toilet paper. There are two main methods of pulping, mechanical and chemical. Mechanical pulping involves grinding the wood chips against a rotating stone or metal disc. This method is efficient but retains most of the lignin, a natural glue that holds the fibers together. While this produces paper quickly, it results in a product that is less durable and more prone to yellowing over time. Chemical pulping, on the other hand, uses a process called the craft method. The wood chips are cooked in a chemical solution, typically a mix of sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfide, which breaks down the lignin and separates the fibers. This method produces a stronger, more durable pulp making it ideal for high-quality toilet paper. The chemicals used in the process are recovered and reused, reducing waste and environmental impact. The next crucial steps are Step 4, Bleaching and Washing. This process ensures the pulp is both safe and visually appealing. First, the pulp undergoes a thorough washing process. This step removes any remaining chemicals or impurities, ensuring the final product is clean and safe for use. After washing, the pulp is bleached to achieve the bright white color associated with most toilet paper. Modern bleaching methods have become more environmentally friendly. Instead of relying on chlorine-based chemicals, which can be harmful, many manufacturers now use oxygen or hydrogen peroxide, 
These alternatives are not only safer for the environment, but also ensure the paper is gentle for everyday use. By the end of this process, the pulp is clean, bright, and ready for the final stages of production. This careful attention to cleanliness and sustainability ensures the toilet paper we use is both high quality and eco-conscious. Before we continue, take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to Howchili for more fascinating insights into how everyday products are made. Step 5. Paper Making The bleached pulp is now ready to be transformed into paper. This stage takes place on a massive machine called a Fordrinier machine, which can stretch as long as a football field. The process begins with the pulp being mixed with water to create a slurry, which is then spread onto a moving mesh screen. As the water drains through the screen, a thin mat of fibers is left behind. This mat then passes through a series of rollers that squeeze out more water and press the fibers together. The partially dried sheet moves through heated drying cylinders where the remaining moisture is evaporated, leaving a continuous sheet of paper. To give toilet paper its soft, textured feel, the paper undergoes a process called creeping. The dried sheet is scraped off the drying cylinders with a blade, creating tiny wrinkles that make the paper softer and more absorbent. Step 6. Embossing and Perforating At this stage, the paper is nearly complete, but it undergoes two final processes to enhance its usability and appearance – embossing and perforating. First, the paper is embossed with patterns. This step serves a dual purpose. Not only does it add a decorative element, making the paper visually appealing, but it also improves its texture and strength. The embossing process creates small raised designs on the surface, which enhance the paper's ability to absorb moisture. Once embossed, the paper is perforated into individual sheets. This allows the paper to be easily torn into the familiar squares we use daily. After perforation, the paper is wound onto large rolls known as parent rolls. These rolls are massive, often weighing several tons and measuring up to 10 feet wide. They serve as the foundation for the smaller rolls we use at home, which are created during the final conversion process. By the end of this step, the paper is fully prepared, combining practicality with a refined finish, ready to be transformed into the convenient rolls we recognize. Step 7. Converting into Toilet Rolls The parent rolls are transported to a converting facility, where they are transformed into the familiar toilet paper rolls we see on store shelves. The first step in this process is unwinding the parent rolls and cutting them into narrower strips. These strips are then perforated and cut into individual sheets. Next, the sheets are wound onto cardboard tubes to create the unfinished rolls. The rolls are then wrapped in plastic or paper packaging, ensuring they stay clean and protected until they reach the consumer. The entire process is highly automated, with machines handling everything from cutting to packaging, ensuring efficiency and consistency. Step 8. Quality Control This is a critical part of toilet paper production. Throughout the process, samples are regularly tested for strength, softness, and absorbency. Any rolls that don't meet the strict quality standards are recycled back into the production process in order to minimize waste. This rigorous testing ensures that every roll of toilet paper meets the high standards consumers expect. Step 9. Packaging Once the toilet paper is cut, perforated, and rolled onto cardboard tubes, it's time for packaging. This step makes sure the rolls stay clean, dry, and ready for stores or your home. Let's break it down in simple terms. First, the rolls are cut to the right size. A single roll usually has 200 to 1,000 sheets, depending on whether it's for homes or businesses. Bigger rolls are made for places like offices or restaurants, while smaller ones are for your bathroom at home. Next, each roll gets wrapped up. Most of the time, they're covered in plastic to keep them safe from moisture and dirt. But some brands are going green and using paper wrapping instead, which is better for the environment. While wrapping, they also add labels with info like the brand name, how many sheets are in the roll, and if it's eco-friendly or recycled. After that, the wrapped rolls are packed into cardboard boxes. A box might have 4 to 48 rolls for homes, or 96 plus rolls for businesses. These boxes are designed to be strong and easy to stack, so they don't damage during shipping. Finally. The boxes are loaded onto trucks and sent to stores or delivered straight to your door if you order online. And that's how toilet paper makes its way from the factory to your bathroom. Next time you grab a roll of toilet paper, pause for a moment to appreciate the remarkable journey it took to get there. 
From sustainable forestry to cutting-edge manufacturing, the production of toilet paper showcases human ingenuity and our ability to transform natural resources into everyday essentials. Here's something interesting. The average person goes through more than 20,000 sheets of toilet paper every year. And did you know toilet paper dates back to 6th century China? Though it didn't catch on globally until the late 1800s. During World War II, toilet paper was so scarce that people had to get creative, using things like newspapers instead. It's crazy to think how far this everyday essential has come to become such a crucial part of our lives. If you enjoyed learning about this process, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Houchily for more fascinating insights into how everyday products are made. Until next time, stay informed.